What's up, Chromies? Happy summer to you. Today, I'm going to be sharing my favorite links, updates, and resources for July 2024. We're at the peak of summer. Hope you're having a great time, enjoying some time off with friends, family, sitting poolside, beachside, hiking through the woods, whatever you do to relax and recharge. Even though it's summer, the updates don't stop. So uh, here are a few things for you to think about and consider as you... Um, Start to think about the upcoming school year uh, for us in the Midwest. We've still got quite a bit of summer left. Don't usually start to the end of August, but I know for some of my southern schools, we only have a few weeks left before uh, the year begins. So let's get after it. Uh, check out some of these updates for uh, July 2024. Want to first off thank my longtime sponsor, Visor for Chromebooks. Appreciate their continued support. If you are in charge of managing your Chromebook fleet, Visor is a great tool. Uh, it'll help you manage your devices, loaners, repairs, um, cases, chargers, any technology resources, not just Chromebooks. Um, this is a great time to get started with Visor ahead of the school year. If you're struggling to inventory all of your technology and keep track of who has what, Visor's uh, a great solution. You can head over to Visor, V I Z O R dot cloud slash CBC to learn more, schedule a uh, no obligation demo, and uh, see if Visor is a good fit for your school. All right, let's check out some links for July 2024, as it seems like we always do. Let's uh, start out with some AI-related updates. Gemini can now query and answer questions related to your emails and documents inside of your Google Workspace account. Now, this is not new necessarily, but it is new for workspace accounts. So um, Gemini extensions, this is what we're talking about, um, are now available for workspace domains. Now, in order for you to access this particular feature, you would need to have a Gemini license attached to your account. We've talked about that in previous episodes. Uh, it's $20 per user per month. Seems like a lot. That's the same price as um, ChatGPT and a lot of other professional AI tools. If you don't want to pay, this feature is available at no cost through your personal Gmail account. Now, all you have to do is open up Gemini, click on the settings tab in the bottom left corner of Gemini, and you should see extensions. Um, and depending on if you're in a personal or a school account, you'll see a variety of options. Your IT department will need to enable this um, if you're using your school account. But this allows you to um, tag or query Gemini. So uh, I'm going to do a Gemini prompt here. I type the at symbol and then Google Drive. And then I can ask it a question like um, summarize the files, uh, my files that talk about using emoji in the classroom. Um, World Emoji Day is actually uh, today, July 17th. So it's gonna actually look through Google Drive, find relevant files that match my question, and then summarize it for me. I can ask it for the links uh, if I need to. There you go. Uh, really cool. So, you know, accessing files and drive or finding files and drive is always a challenge. Now you can use the power of AI uh, to do so. So it found, uh, let me see here, quite a few, uh, one, two, three, about five different files that talk about emoji, use of uh, emoji in the classroom. A little bit easier than pecking through my Google Drive account one uh, file at a time. So that's link number one. We now have access to Gmail uh, and Drive inside of uh, Gemini. Next up, link number two um, is Google Vids. So uh, earlier this year, Google announced a brand new product. They really didn't say much about it. They just said, we have this thing called Google Vids powered by AI coming soon. And we're like, okay, well, let's see what this emerges at. I just received access to Google Vids. I'm not prepared to do a full review of it. Um, it is a 
complicated tool. There's a lot of options, but it does look interesting. Um, so in order to have access to Google Vids, it's still in beta. Your school would need to sign up for Google Workspace Labs. This would give you access to experimental tools ahead of their public um, launch. So I'll leave the link to Workspace Labs in the show notes. Your IT department would need to register your domain, at which point you'll be able to access those experimental tools. I'll give you a quick little uh, sneak peek of it. Those of you who are watching over on YouTube, uh, what this looks like. So from my Google Drive account, I have a new option. If I click on new, you see doc slide sheets and now Google vids. So when I click on it, it'll open up and ask me what I want to create. Kind of a, a template wizard walks me through. Um, it does have some AI enhancements so I can describe what I want and it'll attempt to create something, uh, hopefully that matches. Uh, there's very limited templates. Right now there are three different styles available. Um, again, very new, still under development. Uh, I played around with it a little bit. Um, you know, the AI did not magically create the thing that I was hoping for. Uh, it, it has a start, but I've got to go in and do a lot of editing. Um, we don't have a lot of information about who and how we'll access Google vids. Um, we do know that there will be two versions of vids, an AI enhanced version and a non um, AI version. Um, it sounds like you're going to need a workspace, uh, Gemini for workspace license, uh, to access the AI version. Um, but a Google, um, workspace education plus license, uh, which many of you have, um, will give you access to the non AI version of, uh, of vids. I'll play around with it. I'll do a full review of video and let you know, uh, what my thoughts are, whether it's worth, worth the cost, worth upgrading and, uh, what the potential is for the classroom. So always cool, pretty, um, unusual to have a brand new Google product that does not happen uh, very frequently. So, uh, we'll try it out and uh, I'll let you know what to do. All right, one more AI related resource. Uh, this one is pretty interesting. Uh, it's fun. Um, it is a research project created by Northwestern University and MIT to measure human ability to identify AI images. So um, we'll open up this website. This will be really fun for students to do. There's lots of, uh, of these. Now, the good news is you do not have to log in, sign up. You don't have to give any personal information at all. I'm presented with an image. Uh, so for those of you who are listening only, um, there's an image of a young girl. Uh, it's got kind of a, a blurry background. Um, she's got long blonde hair, very detailed in the ha um, detailed facial expression. Um, and then I have two buttons. Is this real or is this fake? I'm going to say that this is a synthetic image generated by AI. Um, it looks great, but there's not a lot of like detail in here. So I'm going to say it's uh, AI gem generated. And then I have this slider where I slide my confidence level. Am I a hundred percent confident? Not confident at all. Um, I am uh, fairly confident. Okay. You can put little notes why you think it's AI. If you feel like it, we'll hit submit. And oh, got it wrong. So that is a real image. So strike one for uh, for John. So it'll display another one, and you just uh, continue going from there. Um, so this is a great, could be a great teaching opportunity. Um, I you know misinformation, fake information, uh, you know double checking information is more important than ever, and this uh, is a, an easy tool to help you do that. Um, so this is, uh, again, part of Northwestern and MIT research, uh, study. Let me know what you think. Today, I am excited to announce my third year of hosting weekly webinars for teachers. Uh, Wednesday webinars with John will be back for the 24, 25 school year, starting in October, every Wednesday from October through May, I offer a unique 
60 minute webinar for teachers. You can sign up your district to get access to these. Uh, last year I had about uh, four or 500 teachers who joined me. The idea here is that you will not participate in every webinar. That would be terrible, way too much, but that every teacher will see one, two, three sessions that are really designed um, and tailored right for them. One size fits all professional development uh, is frustrating after a time. And so these sessions get into some very detailed subject area, grade level, instructional specific teaching strategies. So for example, I've got the whole list up on my website, all 30 sessions for this coming year. Um, one session that I'm excited about is simplifying lesson planning with AI. This is not just a general intro to AI session. This is how can a teacher, elementary, middle, high school, utilize various AI tools to simplify and improve their lesson planning process. So that'll be on October 16th. Um, on November 6th, I'll be doing a webinar on supporting students with special needs. We'll talk about various uh, accessibility features and instructional strategies for helping um, diverse learners. Um, on December 11th, guided notes with Google Docs. If you want your students to take notes during um, direct instruction while watching videos, I've got some strategies and tips for making that easier for them and easier for you to grade and provide feedback on those resources. Uh, and then one more, um, this one is new for this year, uh, February 12th, I'll be doing a session called Sneaky Ways to Teach Writing. Very few students are excited about writing. Uh, especially traditional, you know, research paper, persuasive essay, things like that. So I have a variety of sneaky ways that students will be practicing the writing skills without realizing it. Um, and this will get into video projects, podcasting, building websites. So they're still learning writing skills, but they're doing it in a modern way that uh, hopefully they'll be much more excited and motivated by um, than some of the traditional methods. That's a, a quick sneak peek of some of the sessions. Um, again, there's 30 of them over the course of the school year. Uh, registration is open for Wednesday webinars with John. Um, you can register as an individual. So any single teacher can uh, sign up. The cost is $99. That's for the full year. You get all the sessions, all my resources. Uh, continuing education credit is included uh, with that. Um, or if you want to register your entire district, I have a discounted um, price for that. So uh, uh, schools can register. It's $1,000 for the school plus $25 uh, for the teacher. So um, I've got big schools, small schools, everybody in between that signs up. Continual uh, professional development all year long. I handle everything, all of the communication, uh, registration, documentation, attendance, certificates, uh, continuing education, all that is uh, included in that uh, one price. If you're interested, you can head over to the show uh, notes for this episode or uh, my website, uh, chrmbook.com slash WW for Wednesday webinar. Uh, always have a fun time doing that. Learn a lot in the research uh, that I put in for each of those sessions. Uh, these are on demand. So every Wednesday, 9 a.m., a new session is released. You can watch it at your convenience. Again, you don't watch all 30. You pick and choose the ones uh, that are a good fit for you. All right, let's move on to link number four, um, e-signatures in Google Docs. So this is uh, something Google's been working on for a while. Um, that allows you to request an electronic signature right from Google Docs without having to use, you know, an eSign uh, Doc Hub type uh, tool. Um, this is a premium feature. If your school is EDU Plus, you'll have this. You'll just go to the insert menu in a Google Doc and you'll see uh, signature fields. You can collect signature, date, uh, title, initials. Um, you can collect up to 10 signatures in a document, sends out a PDF. People can sign that. Um, you don't need a touch screen to sign it. It's very easy. It works on mobile, um, laptop. Um, it's a great way to collect, you know, I'm thinking permission slips, 
Um, if, you know, as a uh, science teacher, I would always have my students sign my lab contract for lab safety rules. So we could do this all electronically now uh, without having to add additional tools or collect paper signatures, uh, things like that. So simple, easy. I did a video on it. Um, it's a great little feature. We've got a new update for Google Calendar and Google Meet. If you uh, schedule a lot of virtual meetings, this will be very helpful. You can now schedule your meeting settings from within the calendar. And this is very helpful, especially if you need to record the meeting, take attendance, take notes, um, transcripts, things like that. If you've ever unfortunately forgotten to click the record button, it's very sad. <laughs> so now in Google Calendar, when you're setting up the meeting, you will be able to configure those features right from within uh, the calendar setting. So it's ready to go. That way, when you start your meeting, it automatically you know, transcribes it, records it, takes notes, um, whichever options that you select. As someone who does a lot of meetings uh, with Google Meet and records most of them, this is a nice new feature. That'll be rolling out uh, to... Um, districts soon, starting July 9th. So it should be coming out right now. And this will be available for um, all the Education Plus, anybody who has the Education Plus upgrade for Google Meet. All right, next up, I have a very sad one. This one is personally very disappointing. Um, as reported by Chrome Unboxed, lacrosse is dead. Um, lacrosse is Linux and Chrome OS. Um, this is a feature that Google has been working on for like four years, been going forever. I've been following it for a long time. The general idea, I did a whole podcast episode on this, uh, a while ago. Um, the, the general idea is that Google was splitting the Chrome browser and the Chrome operating system so they could update them independently. If they did it well, you really wouldn't notice, but um, the one major difference that this did allow was multi-account access. So if you're a, a Mac user or PC user in the Chrome browser, you're able to log into a whole bunch of accounts um, in different uh, browser profiles. On a Chromebook, that was never possible. Lacrosse was going to enable this new feature. I am currently using it right now. I'm using a beta version of lacrosse. Uh, and I've got right now, I mean, I'm signed into like 12 different Google accounts. It's wonderful. Unfortunately, Google has decided to go a different direction and they posted an update on the Chrome developer blog that they are uh, discontinuing the lacrosse browser um, from the a uh, post that says, as we refocus our efforts on achieving similar objectives with Chrome OS, embracing portions of the Android stack, we've decided to end support for this experiment. We believe this will be a more effective way to help accelerate the pace and innovation of Chromebooks. Now, what does this mean for you, for your domain, for your IT department? Absolutely nothing. Um, it is a little surprising to me that Google pulled the plug like this because uh, they were really close to launching this, um, you know, as the, the primary version of Chrome. I mean, they even went to uh, the steps of adding features in the admin console, emailing admins saying, hey, this is coming. You should beta test this. You know, it was, uh, I think, January of 2025 is when they were anticipating starting to make the switch. So it's, it's a pretty abrupt, you know, um, about face, uh, what they're, what they're doing. I need to dig into what it means by, um, you know, further development into the Android stack. Um, Google made an announcement that they're, uh, essentially going to be building on top of the Android version of Linux. I I've got to dig into the details to, uh, to find out if Google does its job. Well, none of this technical stuff should matter at all. You log into your Chromebook and it works. It does what you want. Um, this is all kind of back end stuff that's designed to make sure that it's safe, it's secure, it can be updated quickly, um, et cetera. So I'm personally disappointed by this because I really enjoyed the multi account switching that the lacrosse version of the browser provided to me. I have no idea if Google plans to bring that to 
you know, Chromebooks in another fashion. Um, we'll see. So I've got a few months to enjoy my multi-account switching. Um, lacrosse will cease to exist, um, I think, in the next few months. Um, with one, I think it was one Chrome 128, they're going to pull everything. Um, so after that, I'm going to be back to the regular version of Chrome and the old you know, uh, browser switching, which is definitely not uh, not that good. So Google gives and Google takes away as it uh, as it sees fit. Don't all, don't always understand what's going on in the inner workings um, here, but uh, they've got a plan, I guess. I've got three more updates to share with you today. Uh, today, July 17th, is World Emoji Day. Big holiday. Love to know how you're celebrating. Um, if you did not celebrate, I've got some resources for you. Um, a few years ago, I shared a blog post on 10 ways to use emoji in the classroom. Emoji is great. You know, It's simple. It's easy. It communicates more than words. You know, Pictures worth a thousand words. Um, so I've got 10 different ways uh, that you can use emoji in your classroom. I'll, I'll just do a couple um, to uh, get you started. One way that I love talking about is um, adding emoji to my Google Drive folders. This is a great way to make them easier to find, uh, to force organize them. So your emoji folders will go to the top of your list, uh, which is a great option. Uh, so that's one of my favorites. I love using emoji in Google Classroom, and there's lots of different places you can use it. Google Classroom is very text heavy, and to break up that text, make it a little more user friendly, easy, especially for young students to navigate, I'll use emojis in my um, topics, in my instructions, um, even in the rubrics that I create uh, in Google Classroom. So lots of really great ways to use emoji. If you'd like to join the conversation, I posted these resources on my Facebook page and teachers have been sharing some of the different ways they use emoji uh, in their classroom. So uh, head over to the Chromebook Classroom Facebook page and add your ideas uh, to the list. If you're not uh, part of that community, love to connect with you there. Uh, I know, you know, Facebook gets a bad rap by some people, but uh, I found it to be great. Um, I'd say I get more engagement over on Facebook than uh, I do on Twitter, Instagram, and whatnot. So it's it's a great place to hang out. Uh, we just talk about teaching and classroom ideas and tips. Uh, that's our focus, and uh, everybody's great, very nice, and uh, we have a good time. Next up, we've got some nice updates from the team over at Figma. Uh, Figma is a really interesting creative tool that educators are starting to embrace. Um, Fig Jam, I've talked about quite a few times as a great replacement for Jamboard. Figma has just, a launch, just launched Figma Slides. So this is a presentation tool. It's fun, collaborative, very visual and colorful. Um, so if your students are sick of Google Slides, give Figma Slides a try. Figma is 100% free for educators, teachers, and students. You can use um, Fig Jam, which is a whiteboard tool. We've got Fig, uh, Fig Slides. And then they also have their flagship tool, uh, Figma. Uh, it's kind of a, um, a whiteboarding or um, prototyping app. Uh, that a lot of designers use for, for developing mobile applications and websites, things like that. Um, Figma is a little more technical, uh, but Fig Jam, Fig Slides, very accessible for students. They've got tons of great templates and resources. And then I also want to encourage you, another Facebook uh, option for you, to join the Figma education community over on Facebook. Um, Lauren and David and the entire Figma team are very active in that group. It's a great place to get help and support. If you're you know, looking at using Fig Jam as a Jamboard alternative, 
great place to go. Lots of teachers sharing their tips and ideas for incorporating Figma uh, into their classroom, how it works with uh, Google Classroom and classroom management things. And you get to directly communicate with the uh, team at Figma. And they're always very responsive to um, ideas and suggestions for improving the product. So uh, check it out. Um, I'm in there. Say hello, and uh, we'll share our tips together. All right, final link for uh, July 2024 is a book recommendation. Um, I'm about uh, halfway through a book called The Art of Online Writing by Nicholas Cole. Now, I learned about Nicholas Cole um, from Twitter because Nick is a full time ghostwriter and has been talking a lot about the impact of AI on writing. And I was very curious about his perspective because he makes his living writing for people on the internet, something that you would think would be consumed by the tools like ChatGPT and, and Gemini. But he is not at all anti-AI. Um, he, he sees a path forward for writers and AI to exist together. So that's kind of how I was introduced to him. This book is not new. Um, he wrote this several years ago. Uh, Nick grew quite famous by his posts over on um, some on Reddit, but Quora, um, the question and answer website, is uh, kind of where he made a name for himself. And he learned a lot about the unique need to write for a digital audience and format. And so this book is really designed to teach like ghostwriters and people how to write effectively. But I think it could be a very interesting read for English teachers who need to update their examples and illustrations to encourage students to develop their writing skills. We talked about this, you know, a little bit already um, when I was talking about my webinars. Kids are not super excited about writing research papers or persuasive essays. Like that's not really how we communicate in the 21st century. Now that doesn't mean that writing is no longer important. I would say it's more critical than ever, but the application of writing has changed. This book, The Art of Online Writing, goes into incredible detail about how to write a headline, how to write a paragraph that pulls the reader forward, how to write in a way that is fast paced for the type of audience and the expectations of the audience in uh, on the Internet in the 21st century. So it's really good. You know, the core skills of. Uh, of writing, of grammar, of, you know, introductions and thesis statements, all of that is, is the same. Like you still need to teach those skills. How you apply those skills in the 21st century is where I think this book could be um, a, a great encouragement. This is going to give English teachers ways to motivate students to become effective writers. Um, so check it out. I'm about halfway through. Really have enjoyed it so far. Um, he's a good writer. So he's got lots of stories uh, and um, very practical uh, ideas in there. Well, that wraps up the links for July 2024. Uh, thank you once again to Visor for supporting the podcast. Uh, if you're interested in managing your Chromebooks more effectively, head over to vizor.cloud slash cbc to, uh, to learn more. If you enjoyed the show, um, make sure you follow over on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever tool that you uh, use, however you listen to uh, podcasts. Um, feel free to share feedback that you have. Love to follow, uh, love to connect with you over on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the places. Let me know uh, if you have any links that you think I should include. Love to include those um, uh, in the next episode. Enjoy the remainder of your summer. Uh, my family is heading off to Grand Haven State Park to do some camping over the next couple of days. Uh, always a good time to be on the beach. Got my Starlink internet, so I'll be uh, doing some webinars from the beach for the next couple of days. The Google Certification Academy uh, in the middle of uh, working with a group of teachers. Um, it's always fun helping them become Google uh, Certified Educators. Enjoy your summer. 
I'll be back here next month with more tips and resources you can use in your classroom. Thanks.